Welcome back to this day. Joining me now with the Golden Rain Foundation update is Bunny Carpenter and Treasurer Jim Hopkins. Hello, guys. So Hello. nice to meet you. Thank you for coming in today. Same here. So tell me, uh, how's your day going? Everything going well? How's your week? Hey, it's beautiful, <laughs> especially living here in sunny California <laughs> with the yeah. weather. It's, Absolutely. It's a great place to be. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, beautiful, gorgeous day today. I was so happy to like, oh my gosh, it was sunny and not the clouds today. So definitely affects my, you know, feelings of, of feeling good. Yep. <laughs> so Bunny, you're president. Tell me, what is fulfilling about this for you to be so involved? I absolutely love this village. I can tell you it's a very special place to live. Um, where can you go to have a resort, si resort style community at an affordable place, affordable, <laughs> <laughs> where everybody can afford to live, okay? A safe environment. Um, I, I've been to uh, other communities throughout the United States and there are very few communities that can compare to ours. Mm. So. That's wonderful. Yeah. And Jim, tell me, what's your back? What's your background? Oh boy, I've, uh, I've I've worked with IBM for about 20 years, and uh, after that, I owned my own businesses. Uh, became CFO of a couple of smaller businesses, 100, 150 million dollars, and just uh, kind of been a financial journeyman of sorts because I I like the challenge, and uh, whenever I resolve something or solve something, I want to move on. Uh, it's uh, it's hurt me financially, but uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Wonderful. So, so tell us. You know, we kind of saw the graphic a moment ago, but what are, what are all the special things about living here in Laguna Woods Village? I can tell you, you can't beat the location. Yeah. You know, we're seven miles from the beach. We have medical facilities all around us. We have more amenities than we know what to do with. I mean. And a lot of people say, well, but I don't use the amenities. But I don't think they're really thinking when they say that. Because the amenities also include the services that GRF provides. And those services are, are social services, transportation, um, you know, your residence services, all of these services that also include the amenities. So believe me, everybody uses something that we provide at some time. Right, right. Yeah, you probably just might not realize it because you're like, oh, I'm not going to Clubhouse 3. But yeah, you're right. There are so many other services and, and resources as well that right. you know are, are constantly available. Um, are there things that people say, have you heard, like the one or two top things that people say, well, this is why I chose to come here? Have you, you know, guys believe it or not, the least used is transportation. Okay. But everybody comes here because they say, when I don't drive anymore, I know I have a bus that I can get around. This is one of the reasons why GRF, you know, it's included in the dues. There's no cost to anybody, you know, uh, as far as using that. But they also come here for the amenities. I, I, I can tell you having a pack center is very unusual for a, yeah. a, a 55 plus community to have. And, uh, and the fantastic entertainment that we have here. There is something that you can do every night yeah. if, if you want to. I mean, and, twice and, a morning and, or afternoon and night. <laughs> right. There, yeah, that is so <coughs> wonderful. And, and I saw on your slide there that Garth Brooks is going to be coming. I'm like, are you kidding me? You guys really got Garth Brooks? OK. <laughs> we, we, we get tributes. OK. <laughs> OK, so it's a Garth Brook tribute. But I can tell you these artists, you know, that come in for tributes are, are fantastic. Oh, yeah, just, absolutely. I mean, and, and, and just to they bring the essence and bring in the, the music. And yeah, it's, it, you hardly even miss that it's not the actual artist who created it, because it's so good, yeah. Right. I've noticed just a huge surrection with, with uh, tribute bands. It's so fun to go to and see them. <laughs> so um, let's see, what about some of the things that the Golden Rain Foundation manages and they maintain, like uh, things you mentioned, like cable TV, um, social services, the PC and Mac learning centers. Um, you know, these are all big things for educating and learning and moving with the times. 
that you guys take care of? So recreation, that's the biggest thing, okay? And, um, and then we have to maintain our, our uh, clubhouses. But recreation, where can you go with so many pickleball courts, with so many, <laughs> so many, so many um, you know, the tennis courts? I mean, it's really unreal, you know, what we have here. And um, that's actually why um, that I wanted to, to be able to have Jim basically talk about our reserves. Okay. Because it is so important that we have financial stability in order to be able to maintain these amenities, which I have to say is the face of this community. People think about that. You know, it's not the houses that they come here for. They come here for the amenities and what we provide. Okay. So, yeah, so what is the, the GRF trust responsibilities? Okay, the, well, actually, uh, okay, Bonnie is better can, able to I talk about the trust responsibilities, but in general, to manage the assets of the Golden Rain Foundation, uh, which uh, 60 years ago were put into a trust, okay? And Golden Rain Foundation was given the responsibility and the opportunity <laughs> to, to manage that trust. So all of the assets of uh, GRF belong to the trust, or most of the assets today. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and so that, obviously, in order to, uh, to administer and take care of those assets, it, it takes some money, and to provide the services. And I think that's what um, uh, Bunny was referring to, is that uh, we, we have to have a reserve. We also have to have an operating budget <coughs> in order to provide those services. So I think the first thing I really wanted to do was to go over our operating budget, just a, just a summary, because most people want to know well, how much are you charging me per month? Yes. All right? And uh, is it going up or is it staying the same? All of those kinds of good things. So rather than go through all the details of the numbers, I thought I'd switch right to the per manor per month, also known as the HOA fee. Yes. And so here's our budget summary. Okay. So if you take a look at the top line, our net expense, which is about 35 or $40 million, uh, basically went up only $1.91 uh, per per matter per month, okay? That's the operating side of it. However, and that's only less than 1%. However, when you look at the surplus recovery, if you may recall, we had uh, reduced amenities, et cetera, during COVID, and so we've been returning those fees back to the residents over a period of time. As, as we analyze them and understand what they are and what they were, we return them. So in 2023, it was $10 that was returned. In 2024, it will be $5. Well, that actually represents an increase in your fee from, from year to year, because now we reduce the, the, uh, the, the surplus uh, return. So what that makes us is basically this year, your GRF portion will go up $6.91 per manor per month, or 3%, all right? which, uh, when you look at the, the raw numbers, uh, basically the operating side only went up primarily because of insurance, something that we really have no, uh, no, no control, uh, over. control over. At the same time, um, if you look at operating, uh, VMS has done a superb job of managing the, especially the uh, employee resources where they've made some extraordinary moves to reduce um, the, um, uh, I guess the, not the employee compensation, but the employee uh, benefits package, with, while maintaining the benefits, they've actually been able to reduce some of the cost. So wow. it's been that extraordinary, I think, that they've done this year. Uh, something I wanted to ask about the surplus is mm -hmm. how many more years will that continue happening? Or well, is, I assume that's going to end at a certain point? Well, so far, 2024 looks like the end, but if, uh, if we do continue to do the job we're doing uh, this year, we could end up with a surplus this year. But I you know, can't guarantee that because a lot of the expenses come at the end of the year. And so we, we, we kind of look, we have to look at it. That's why it's taken a little while to give it, uh, to give it back. Okay. Now, if you look at what we've done over the last three years, and I think many people don't realize this, and many of the residents don't realize this, we've been asked this question. Uh, over the last three years, counting 2024, we will have given back $23 per month per, per month or $3.5 million. And again, that was because of the reduced uh, 
uh, availability of services and amenities during the COVID. So, you know, we, we want to let everybody know that we, we're doing our job and we have returned those, uh, those funds to you. I mean, and that's great to know mm -hmm. that, hey, you know, these services couldn't be run during mm -hmm. that time. That was not an expected thing. And mm -hmm. it, it probably happened so quickly that you couldn't make those changes right then and there when it was all happening. And so this was a way you figured that out to return that money. I mean, obviously very honest and trustworthy. And, and you know, I'm sure it makes the residents feel good to know. Well, that's a good point. Um, I think some residents expected it right away. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, we don't get audited and the final numbers are not final until about April of each year. So it takes the next year to understand exactly what we have and what we can do with it. So we're, we're tracking all of that. And so we make sure that uh, the residents, us residents, get what's, what's due to us. That's the nice mm -hmm. thing about having residents on the board, right? <laughs> and yes, you're yes, working for yes. yourselves as well as the good of, of everyone. So wonderful. And then. Um, what is your next slide that you had that you wanted to go over? Okay, well, what I'm looking at now is uh, when uh, ma uh, Madam President mentioned the reserves, all right? And one of the things that comes out of the reserves is capital expenditures. Well, what does that mean? That means this expenditure either to replace, improve, uh, or keep uh, up to date our assets. We've got about $150 million worth of assets, and that's at cost. So replacement sometimes is actually a considerably more than that because obviously inflation uh, is with us all and it looks like it's going to be with us for a long time. So in order to replace these assets, right, it takes a while. It, it, takes, it takes some money. And it also takes a savings account. And that's what the reserve account is all about. It's essentially a savings account. Uh, as we save for the assets that we buy today, we may have to replace 7, 10, 15, even 30 years from now. And so will you start saving as soon as you purchase an asset. That's really what we do. That's why I call it a savings account. In financial terms, it's called the reserve account. Okay. Good. That makes sense, yeah. And, and every year, we allocate funds to spend out of it. In many cases, and I, the chart you have in front of you, uh, in many cases, we don't know the exact amount because larger projects take a lot of time and effort to actually estimate. So what we do is we allocate or reserve some funds out of the reserve account to say, hey, look, this is the approximate amount we'll spend. It's not authorized yet because many of the larger projects require a lot of analysis before we know what the final number will be. Right? But with that said, um, spatialization, uh, that's number one up there. Right? And uh, that was reserved at uh, or allocated at $7 million. Now, there's been a lot of misinformation out there on on, uh, on, uh, on uh, social media and other forums about that $7 million. That is not a commitment to spend that money. Okay, as I said before, it's an allocation. Now, when we start to look at, uh, by the way, that's the result of us uh, d making a decision not to rebuild uh, Building E. All right, now we'll go through what Building E is, but the security people were in, the security uh, department was in there along with a couple of other departments. So what we decided to do was, since the only estimate that we had, legitimate estimate, was about $7 million, we said, let's allocate that amount, knowing and being committed that we really didn't want to spend that amount of money. Right. But to do anything less would have been financially irresponsible. So it's just an allocation. It's just okay. an allocation. Um, and uh, I'll just go through the next uh, two, the clubhouse renovation, which is that um, that's, that's essentially the clubhouses, including Clubhouse uh, One, which is, due, which is our first clubhouse, and is made due for a major update. It's not really an update, it's just to maintain what's there. But when you have a building that old, you know, it's gonna cost some money to keep it up to speed. And of course, vehicles, essentially every year we've gotta replace vehicles. There's some 400 or so vehicles, and mobile equipment, not just vehicles, but mobile equipment is also included in that. What do you mean by what's mobile equipment? Uh, if you notice, we, we have some, uh, uh, there are lawnmowers, uh, big, the big lawnmowers uh, that has to be, they have to be replaced. There's also some, some um, major construction type equipment. I'm not sure where you clean your, may clean the, the um, uh, not the clubhouses, the 
uh, polish the floors. Polish and that the kind floors. Of thing. All all those okay. kinds of things need to be uh, replaced. Okay, over time because they run out. The other part of this is, uh, as you know, there's mandates now to go electric, mm -hmm. and so that has to be considered in all of this. And elect right now, electric, oh, even though I don't think this includes maybe one or two electric vehicles, but right now, I mean, the mandate in, in 10 years is to become electric, at least in California. Wow, yeah, so that was a big yeah. expense to replace yeah. all vehicles. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's quite a task for GRF to maintain its assets. Again, it has the very large for, uh, number of assets, like I said, $150 million at cost which uh, I don't think we realize on a day-to-day -day basis, that takes a lot to manage. And thanks to VMS and, and the board, uh, we allow them the opportunity to do all the maintenance and things of that nature while giving them the, the funds to do it. Uh, yeah. yeah. And so some of the things on here that are listed at zero, you know, zero percent, is that just because at this time they just don't need any <laughs> anything, like they're fine for the next year, or does it just mean that you know, there hasn't been money yet allocated for those areas. Well, these, these are the, what it says, 0% on that chart. Basically, this is the sum of all of the, the activities. That's 100%. And as you can see, the spatialization was 49% of that activity, uh, just because of the, the, just the amount of it. And Clubhouse Renovation was 20, 21%. Zero is just that they were so small, uh, even though they've been allocated funds for it. They're okay. just so small that it's, you know, okay, they got don't. got it. So yeah, so twenty two thousand that has been allocated for fitness. Yeah, yeah. That's so small. <laughs> yeah, that is small. <laughs> Very like, small. Man, I wish I had that money to yeah. allocate for my projects. Well, they're, yeah. try, they're, they're actually trying some experiments this year, and and some of the uh, some of the equipment's going to be leased for a short while to understand because there's a lot of technology changes, and so purchasing. Uh, some, if, some of the type of fitness equipment, usually it's the health monitors and those kinds of things. So, there's so many changes that we allow the recreation department to do uh, some leasing, uh, some leasing with 30-day uh, 30, 30 cancellation so that they can test out this equipment and see whether or not it's... Uh, it's if it's uh, worth it to it's put worth into it. it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that makes sense. And the, the other part of our um, reserve fund is our portfolio. And there's yeah. also been a lot of misinformation about our portfolio too. So um, again, on social media and lots of other places. But the bottom line is that through September 30th, okay, uh, our portfolio is gained $805,000. And since October, when we really start to focus in on it, uh, it's gained $1.2 million. If I look at it today, uh, it's one point, um, We've gained over one point um, one point three million dollars on it. So it is quite extraordinary that uh, as we changed our strategy during the course of the year, um, that uh, we've been able to, to to make this return on it. That's wonderful. That's very good news. And last but not least, uh, we plan our savings fund or reserves on a thirty-year basis. So I've just given you a snapshot here of what it looks like every five years, okay? And that, what that yellow means in condition, and, and I'll just cut to the chase, it means that we're in fairly good shape. It can be red, which means you're under 30%. And uh, if it's red, then you're, theoretically, the experts say you're in a little bit of trouble because you don't have enough money in your savings account reserve in order to satisfy any sort of uh, activity that come up that may, could drain your reserves. Okay. So we're in the neighborhood of between, uh, depending on what we spend, in the neighborhood of between 35 and 65% throughout the 30 years. And so- And that's like the range where you want to be? That's the range we want to be, and that's the range that the experts, we had some experts come in and evaluate that last year. And that's the range we want to be in. So. I think we've done, you know, we've been a great job of managing the GRF finances as well as the, the reserve slash savings account. And so just out of curiosity, so right now it's at a 67% mm -hmm. reserve, mm -hmm. but in, in five years, in 2029, it'll be a, a 34%. And is that just because you, you are having to take the, these big amounts for building structures and that kind of thing? Yes, con contrary to the mutuals, the, uh, we have 
we have episodes where there's a in a, say a five year period, there may be an extraordinary amount that comes up that you have to be able, be prepared to spend, okay? And usually the first five years, you know, you're focusing in on it, so you have a better idea of what it's going to be. In the out years, it's a it's bunch of estimates based on uh, uh, inflation rates and, and a bunch of other things. But uh, early on, we have a good idea. So it tends to go down, but then as we, for instance, as we look at the space utilization, uh, most likely we won't spend the seven billion, okay? So it will be four instead of seven. That will change the calculation. So that 35%, 30, uh, uh, that 34% could go up to 40% could as Could then change, yeah. okay. All right, wonderful. Well, thank you guys for being here today and, and explaining all this so mm -hmm. everyone can understand. I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, thank you for all having right. us. We'll see you again next time. Mm -hmm. So don't go anywhere. Coming up next, we have announcements and weather right here after the break.